Well, it's finally time, gentlemen. It's time for the new boat walkthrough. We're gonna run through the features of the boat, standard walkthrough, as well as some tackle organization, how I got it laid out, some stuff that's in it. So we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty and do some details on this thing. I'm all caffeined up. Obviously, I'm not truly big time because I'm still drinking freaking generic Diet Coke, but hopefully that'll allow me to talk fast enough to capture all the deets and all the fun stuff with this new boat. All right, let's start with the outside. We ran through some of this stuff in the before walkthrough, but like I said, we're gonna get a little more detail. So right here, we have a Triton TRX 189. That's an 18 foot 11 boat. Beam is 94 inches. Wider than my older Triton, which is super sweet, and I'm really gonna notice it on the water when I'm running, as well as I'm fishing. That deck's wider, better storage, better footing, just more comfortable, dude. Rides like a Cadillac. Trailer's pretty sweet. It's got a swinging tongue on it right here. Um, only issue I'm running into is my truck does not have the like RV plug so I'm having to use this to back up hopefully gonna get a new truck like we talked about not new but new to me in a little bit so we won't have to be putting that in the brake stoppers but that actually speaks to another feature this thing has brakes super sweet on a little 18 foot 18 foot 9 boat Nice tires, nice rims, brakes on there. The boat is wrapped. A lot of you guys have asked me about the wrap. Are you gonna leave it on or are you required to leave it on? One, no, I don't have to leave it on. Two, yes, I am gonna leave it on. Why? Well, I'm not that big time and I'm not a douchebag with a wrap boat, even though now I am a douchebag with a wrap boat. But my thoughts with the wrap is it's gonna protect the boat. Um, I have to store the boat outside in my little carport right there, but any extra protection I can give, uh-oh, here come the police. They, they heard about my new boat now. I, any extra protection I can give the new boat, you know, to protect it from me spitting, because I kind of have a dip every once in a while. And, you know, we got a bunch of grass. The water gets nasty. It gets film on it. It gets algae in it. That protects the gel coat and protects the boat against, you know, tapping into stuff. All those kind of stupid things that happen when you're out fishing that you don't plan on, but that actually happen. We've talked about it before, twin blade power poles. You know, I never had a blade power pole, nor did I have twin power poles on my old boat. I didn't want to spend the extra money on the blades. Blades are pretty sweet though. Biggest difference I've noticed in just playing with them, they're super fast. They're like two to three times faster than my power pole Sportsman 2. So they go down fast and the twin blades allow me to stop the boat kind of in wind that's side hitting me or coming in a weird direction. I don't have to play the wind like I do with one power pole in order to direction the boat in the way that I want to fish. So twin power poles. We got that Merc 150 Pro XS on there. Big thing, jack plate, Atlas jack plate, TH Marine. There is my transducer. That is for basically all my graphs that are networked onto my structure scan or my all-in-one transducer right there. Little side note, that's gonna be remounted. I think I'm gonna get myself a transducer shield and I'm gonna do kind of a, a little different mount on there, but I'll show you guys when I cross that bridge. But for now, it's staying right there. Trailer has all LED lights. Super sweet for the water, super sweet for lasting, super sweet for not replacing bulbs, which is annoying when it comes to trailers. Another cool feature that I like, I hate putting lights on the boat, like when you go out early in the morning and it's just dark enough, but the lights only need to stay on there for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, enough time to like run out to your spot. This guy has navigation lights, one of these on each side, these guys right here. They're the LEDs, they're freaking sweet. You turn the switch, they turn on. You still do have to put the pole light up in back though when you are running, like when it's dark out, they call it the anchor light. But for the front one, it's always annoying to have that thing sitting right there, right where you need to step onto the boat. So that's gonna be a sweet feature. All right, this thing's kind of outside the boat, so we're gonna, we're gonna throw this in the mix as well. I got my point one mounted right here. Not the ideal place to put a point one, but it's the only place I could find to put the point one that was functional from a wire connection standpoint. It was really easy to wire that thing because I could wire it down into the network and then snake it on through. What the point one does and why is it different from the internal like antenna or GPS antenna that's on my, my Lorentz units, which we're gonna talk about in a bit. The point one always tells me what direction the boat is pointed. It points 
straight. You know, if you run your, your regular antenna, your GPS antenna off your normal units, it, yeah, it's sometimes straight, but if you get a little side wind or some kind of side breeze or something, you'll start to see swinging in your path, especially if you have your, your pointer on, that little blue trail that points like a mile a half, mile, mile and a half or something. I forget how long it points, but basically it points directly in front of you. You'll see some swinging. This way, if I'm fishing an underwater structure that I can't see, I can point the boat directly at it, cast to it, and I know I'm going to hit it. So we're in the boat. Let's start with the motor well back here. I have all interstate batteries. Pretty sweet. There are four of them because we got a 36 volt trolling motor as well as a 12 volt cranking battery. We got two power pole pumps right here, a four bank charger, a power kill switch. That's basically to control all the power in the boat so I'm not draining juice when the boat's just sitting. You can see the live well pumps down there. We do have an in-haul transducer right down there. However, I haven't gotten it to work right when I did the test on the boat. So, I'm kind of in limbo with how I'm going to get signal from my 2D, my 2D sonar when I'm running. That, that's a problem I still have to solve. But it, it, that's literally like not the worst problem that I can have. You can see this red bag back here too. This red bag right here is jumper cables why do you have jumper cables well one you never want to need jumper cables but two sometimes somebody needs jumper cables i've helped out a couple guys that have had their their batteries dead out in the middle of lake okeechobee 10 15 miles from the boat ramp they're able to jump their motor get started you know get some juice back in that cranking battery and uh, hopefully get back to the ramp in that. And if you run into that situation, that way you're prepared. Jumper cables are a necessity in any bass boat. You can just put them in the bag, stash them wherever you can stash them, but super handy to have. So this boat, like my other boat, has the basically it's like a storage tray system, except this one, instead of having it towards the front of the boat, it's got it back here. You can see right here, I think these are 320 size boxes. I forget which one. 423 3700 boxes so they basically all slide in then you get this little tray over here Ooh, look at my stash of big crank baits i wonder why i have those huh but yeah so that's where i'm storing all my terminal tackle i got hooks i got weights i got all that as well as more hooks and then just kind of like a stash of you know whatever's hot at the moment 10xd has been hot big crank baits so that's why i got a bunch of them in there so the other thing is you guys know that i bring the dog out all the time so dog is pretty good about not going to the bathroom into the boat but in the end, it's gonna happen. It's not his fault. It's because I take him out, he has fun, he makes me happy when he's on the boat. But in order to take care of that, if he does use the restroom in the boat, I need to have these guys. Plastic bags, Walmart bags, stupid shop bags. But you don't want them just like laying anywhere. So these have these reinforcement panels right here. So I just stuff them right in there. I got two bags, it'll cover me in case there's an emergency and I can always put more in if I need them. All right, this is the storage container behind the captain's seat. Basically, I have one little tackle tray right in there, but then I got a bunch of random stuff. I got my, you know, my tie-up rope, my buoys, my plug knocker, my chest strap. Oh, big thing. Kind of like the jumper cables, every boat needs one of these. First aid kit. Everything in there, other than if I completely like massacre myself, Everything in here is going to be able to help me in case I have an issue on the water, need kind of immediate medical care or whatever. It'll help me at least stop some bleeding or whatever I need to do to just stay safe out there for the most part, except for in a huge emergency. Fire extinguisher, it, all kinds of random stuff. I think I got floating frogs. It's kind of like my random bleep box, if you will. Got a bunch of random stuff in there, stuff that I'm going to need at some point or need more consistently than stuff that I can just take in and put out of the boat, put in the boat, etc. But that's what I got stored in here. And I could put a lot more tackle boxes in there, but I like having kind of like a crap box. No boat of mine, at least, would be complete without a Lexus mat rug, floor rug. Why do I put that in there? Not because it's a Lexus floor mug, because it's cool. Floor mug, floor rug, dude. But uh, basically, the most traction that the boat gets, the place where I'm always putting my feet and standing other than the front of the deck, is right there. I think it, it prevents me getting a bunch of dust on the boat, a bunch of nasty stuff, and with my feet always being down there, it doesn't hurt and it never blows away. I've had one blow away in two and a half years, and that's with the other boat, basically. But it's simple, something you know, simple way you can protect the carpet on the boat. Just sits in there, knock your feet off, keep it clean. 
from the captain's seat. We got a lot right here, so we're gonna run through some stuff. I have my dash mount, HDS 12 Lowrance. You can see back there, a really good buddy of mine made the, these aluminum plates. Super essential, because you need a lot of strength to hold up these big freaking units, man. And um, we have it mounted in there in a bracket style system. Whole lot of screws, nuts, and bolts. Um, kind of hard to show you what's in there. But basically, I built a bracket and used that metal plate, and it's super reinforced, super awesome. Blinker tilt trim. I got a horn. I, I'm not going to turn it on for you, but I got a horn, which is sweet. Got our power pole up and down switch right here. Throttle. There's a hot foot hiding right down there. Pretty sweet. One feature that I really like with this Triton is it has all the fuse resets right under the switches that they correlate with. No more going under the console, digging around, trying to find the fuse that blew, hitting the reset button and getting started again. Right here, you know, hey, fuse popped, you press the button, boom, 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 and you're ready to rock and roll. All right, moving up in the boat. Like I said, this thing has a huge deck. Check this thing out. That deck is much wider than my old boat. I got a lot of room to dance around. If I ever want to learn how to break dance like Mike Iconelli, crazy, never going to happen. I can't dance. White men can't dance, at least 99% of them. But yeah, so I got a big deck. But I got, I got a big deck. <laughs> this could get filthy. But basically, big deck, a lot of space. Um, you can have two people up here, even though it is an 18... What is it, 1811, 189, something like that? Even though it isn't a quote unquote 18 foot boat, you can have two people fishing up here just because of the width of the deck, the beam of the boat. You can see right here, I got my Fortrex, uh, Minn Kota 112. So, reason I didn't put an Altrex on here one, price point. I can't afford that, dude. But down the line, I probably will. The other thing is, is I played with my buddy's Altrex. I love Minn Kota trolling motors, don't get me wrong, they are the best on the market when it comes to fishing grass and just in general with holding up and being reliable, but the, the noise that the thing makes, the, the new Altrex is they're very touchy on the turns, they make a lot of noise and the touching on the turn thing, I don't know about you, but when I'm fishing, I like leave my foot on the pedal like that. And I like lean on it. So if it turns real easy and it's real touchy with that, I'm going to fall out of the boat. And I did that once already, which you guys saw and everybody makes fun of me for. And I, I don't really want to do it again. What else we got up here? We have our power pull foot buttons. I've never had these before. And I actually didn't put the remote around my neck when we took her out for a test spin. And I was like grabbing for the remote. And I'm like, oh, all I have to do is put my foot right there and double tap. And the poles go down. That's pretty awesome. You'll see here too, it has rod secure straps, what they call boat buckles. Keep your rods in place. I actually drive down the highway with those jokers. I put all my rods that I'm gonna use for the day on deck, strap them down with this thing, boop, and go 65, 70 miles an hour down the highway and no problems and I still have all my rods, except for the ones that I've dropped in the water like an idiot. Diet Coke, Diet Coke break. All right, let's get up to the juice juice here. We have an HDS 12 carbon. Actually, let me take the lids off. HDS 12 carbon, Elite TI9. Both are touchscreen. Why do I have two? This is the question I always get. I don't know if I'm gonna go and stick with this Elite TI9. Let me throw that out there immediately. Not 100% sure why. The resolution on the nine inch units is not quote unquote HD, it's 480p. So you get a little bit more noise, I guess, and it's a little harder to define and separate targets, but the price point between this and this is pretty large. So I don't know if I'm ready to make that transition into 212s up front, but at some point I, I think I might, not sure. I might even look at a hook too, because I really don't need the touch screen right here. The reason though, and this kind of like relates to everything. So on this guy, when I'm up front, I'm gonna run a map there, I'm gonna run my 2D sonar right there. Broadband, simple. You know, I got my point one, I know where I am, I can see all my waypoints, they're networked between the unit at the dash and the unit on the bow. Super simple, great. Everything, all the information I need right there. However, when I'm fishing specific targets offshore, brush piles, shell bars, and I wanna drop a buoy, or I, I wanna know what's below me, like what's really below me. Not like 2D sonar with this wide, super wide, broad cone that shows arcs and picks up everything and doesn't really show separation or very specific targets. On this guy, on the Elite TI, I am running downscan. And that downscan is coming from that transducer right there. 
That transducer is an all-in-one HDI transducer. It doesn't give me side scan on this joker, but it does give me down scan. With that down scan, I'm able to find the very edge of a brush pile or something along those lines, drop a buoy directly on it, and then have that, that object marked perfectly and know, hey, I can throw to the right of that buoy, and I'm gonna hit that object. And I know my buoy isn't being dropped on the object, which I think is a big no-no when it comes to offshore fishing. You probably saw out of the corner of your eye too, the boat came with one of these, which is one of those TH Marine, I think it's like a shock nut or it's a vibration nut. I have no idea if they work or if it's a gimmick or what. And I have no way of telling if it works or if it's a gimmick or not. Nut. There's there, all these words, man, coming up. But it's on there. It's kind of expensive, so it's staying on there, and we'll give it a try. If it does something great, if not, not gonna lie, it does look kind of cool. All right, as some of you guys know, um, that talked to me on Facebook or on YouTube, but you know, comment and all that. This did come with a what, what's it called, a hydrowave, basically like a fish noise maker. That's what I like to call it, fish caller, if you will. But it didn't work. There, there was some kind of power connection issue. I reached out to Shay at Uploaded Fishing. He's gonna check in and see what he can do with it. Um, but we gotta get that figured out. I don't know if it's a connection issue or if the unit actually is bad. So we'll get with Shay, we'll get that thing worked out. Cause it'd be cool to get one of those on there. I've heard they do some cool stuff when you're dealing with schools, especially when you have schooling fish that are out in front of you, you can bring them a little closer. Or if you have fish that are so tight to the bottom and you wanna bring them off the bottom to view them a little bit better on the graph, great option. Once again, an object, I don't know what it's called. But it's by TH Marine. It's um, it's like a manhandle. Basically, on these trolling motors, they come with a rope cable. I've broken millions of them. And the worst time to break them is when it's rolling four and a half feet on Lake Okeechobee, and you can't get a pliers in there to pop it to like bring the motor up or put it down. It's a bad situation to be in. It's an easy way to fall off the boat. It's not safe. So these wire cables they don't break they also don't stretch so you got to be a little careful when you're pulling up your trolling motor you don't want to break the springs that actually engage the lock for the bracket so you got to be a little careful but it's a great addition it's also another pricey kind of add-on which is pretty sweet from th marine but a quality product and very reliable no more changing ropes out on your four tracks you know one thing that seems kind of stupid but when i took it out for a test ride really kind of showed off is this guy right here there's a whole panel with a cup holder and a tool holder up here. Seems kind of like whatever, that's great, but I always leave like my water bottle up front and I'm like, wow, I can leave my water bottle up front and not worry about it spilling. I can leave it up there and worry, not worry about it like blowing out of the boat because I have a cup holder. It's like being on your couch for a football game. And I gotta get some tools for this, but um, this is gonna be really handy too because I can leave tools up front. So I don't always have to go to the back of the boat to grab stuff to get a hook out of the fish's mouth because I like getting them back in the water quick and I don't like screwing around the fish. They give me too much fun to hurt them too much. Let's open up these hatches. This boat has a little different storage layout than my boat. It has this big underhead kind of giant storage container and then the two rod lockers. I actually had a third container that had some storage slots in it. This is a little different, but I'm kind of growing to like this a little. It's a lot bigger space. I can store the drone in here. I have all my soft plastics. One huge thing, go to Walmart, buy yourself containers like these. Mark what's in them. That's supposed to say easy swim bait. But basically you can organize your tackle. I have a bunch of these in my garage. And what I do is depending if I'm going to fish deep, if I'm going to fish Okeechobee, if I'm going to fish a lake out of state, some crazy place, I can grab the boxes of tackle, the boxes of plastic that I need to go to that place that I think are gonna be applicable, leave the rest of the stuff in the truck if I think I need extras. But I can throw that stuff right in here. Don't have to reorganize, resort. I got everything that I know I need right here stored cleanly and pretty, pretty well i mean i still got space for more stuff but it, it, the biggest thing is organization i know what i have in here i know what i can take out what i can put in it's a real easy system to follow especially if you, you need a wide range of plastics for different places that you're going to fish so the rod lockers did not come with rod organizers so i bought a bunch of these these are like rod glove things which i'm actually starting to like i wasn't a huge fan or i didn't want to deal with them i tried to figure out some ways to put a rod organizer in here which i still might do but um these things are pretty sweet they like keep the rods from getting all tangled and then i have all my fishing line right here in another plastic container but what it allows me to do is it's actually like like a rod organizer. I can put my longer rods on top, lean the handles, and then I can put my smaller rods on the underside. Another thing in here that's cool is I have my, my oblique bag. 
in my oblique bag, I have stuff to repair real handles. I have stuff to repair. I got zip ties, which could solve all the world's problems. I have rod tip repair stuff. Um, spare key for the boat. I don't even know what else is in here. Fuses, all kinds of like stuff. Like, oh crap. And it's great for me if I have a problem, but it's also always fun. Not even fun. It's all, it always feels good and it always is awesome for the other person if you can help somebody out on the water. If they need some random thing, they just don't have it, you got it, throw it to them. They can keep fishing or like get back safe or whatever they gotta do. And uh, everybody's better, the world's a better place. All right, other rod locker. More plastics. I actually should have some of this stuff out because I don't really need it all. But I got some random like crankbaits, rattle traps. I have, this is one of the coolest things I've found. So you never wanna put tools in the boat because they always rust up and they go to crap. This box will fix nearly anything on the boat. It comes in a plastic container. It's like 20 bucks at Walmart, dude. You get all these tools right here, sockets, you know, freaking screwdriver with random heads, hammer, in case you gotta give somebody the hammer. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, there's pretty much every tool, everything that you could ever want or basically need in there. I also keep, like I said, some fuses, some electrical tape, uh, just some random items that, that always come in handy. And dude, for 20 bucks and then you throw a few extra items in there, you can't beat that. One more thing in the rod locker, and it's a little trick that I figured out. I don't know if other guys have figured this out and it relates to kind of like how I store my bags. I have my boat registration right in here. Super simple, it's always on the boat. I keep it in a, in a big Ziploc. And you basically, you just stuff it into that support beam. It's always there if you get pulled over, if you get stopped by, um, you know, your local, like, wild game down here. It's Florida Wildlife Commission. You can pull it out. You got your documents. You got your info. You don't have to worry about nothing. It's all right there. All right, we got a couple more things back here, and then we're going to wrap it up. So one thing that I really love about this boat is the amount of storage that it has compared to my other boat. You have this middle thing. I can store my scale. Oh, there's a little dip in there. Got my cool dog water bowl dish for bog. Got my remote for my power pole. And then there's also another storage thing right there. I don't know what you're supposed to put in there, but more storage. I don't argue with that. Also in the co-angler seat or the passenger seat, you have a rod storage thing right here. Different like layers. Put your buddy rod in there, run it back, put it on the Velcro. Very sweet, especially for people like me who even when they're fishing alone have 36 rods. So it gives me more space to store those 36 rods. This may seem stupid, but this is kind of one of my most favorite parts about the boat. And I put it in. Maybe that's what it is. I put one of these on my old boat, on my old Triton, and it was the handiest thing ever. And it's a tool rack. This guy right here, basically this one is a comfort troll. On the other boat, I forget which one that I had. I think this one's a comfort troll one. This is actually for the bracket that goes over a trolling motor pedal for to mount a graph. You put it on the side of that, but it was the perfect fit for this. It came in the gray color, which matches the boat. Making it all pretty. But yeah, I have that line clipper attached to there on the, the lanyard string. You just use a little key ring, never lose it and then you can drop your tools in there. If I had a little bigger space, I would have put a little bit bigger one, but that's perfect for what I need. And then you got your tool tray right here. One last thing, we got our live wells. Live wells are live wells, pretty simple. Nothing too spectacular here, but I got my little rig that I got. And I put it, I took it from my old boat, put it in this one, thought I'd note it. You put a zip tie around right there, and then you got your little gator clip or whatever you want to call it. And you got all your call tags right there. Not super expensive, you don't gotta spend 20 bucks on it. Once again, zip tie solving the world's problems, but you got all your call tags, they're on the zip tie. Zip tie doesn't rust or nothing like that. Don't gotta screw anything in. And you got them all right there. One last thing. Since you saw this already, that means I need to get ready to do some fishing. So hopefully, I can pop the cherry on this thing, go catch some fish, make sure everything's tweaked out right. I haven't really fished it through yet. But um, make sure everything's right and get it on the water and get you guys some more videos to enjoy and for me to make because I love making them. So if you like this video, if you like the new boat and want to see a whole bunch more of it and want to see some crazy content, tell me what kind of content you want to see. Subscribe, like, support real fishing, and um, we'll see you the next time we have this thing on the water. All right, guys, tight lines. All right, as some of you guys know who I talk to basically. All right, as some of you guys... Alright, as some as you get. Alright, as some as. Wow.